We're here to answer your game, gaming, and game night questions. Today's topic comes from Sewer Rat Zero, who wrote to say, RPG type games using playing cards would be an interesting topic. I would love to hear you cover. Well, thanks for the great topic, Sewer Rat Zero. Also, great username. Uh, so again, this is going to be an interesting one for us to cover. This one's going to be a little different than probably any topic we've completely covered in the past. Um, the reason for that is at this point in my gaming life, I have only actually played one RPG that uses standard playing cards. So this is an interesting one for me. I don't think, Sean, have you played anything that's... Yeah, I didn't think so. Sean's not played anything that uses standard playing cards as a mechanism. So this was a question outside of our, our general area of expertise. And we did a lot more research than usual on this one, trying to find out about different games that people out there are excited about. Now, thankfully, the internet is full of other people yep. who have asked this question with varying degrees of success. And we stand on the shoulders of those Reddit and board game geek threads that inspired uh, our research. Yeah, I agree. The, we definitely do have to thank um, various forums, blogs. I was on RPG Net, I, Board Game Geek and Reddit were, of course, or technically RPG Geek, though I know they're all the same same uh, suite of sites. Um, this was an interesting one with a, with a lot more research gone into it, and it, um, it was cool to find the information out there. And hopefully in next year at this time, someone will do this research and find us. So consider this an aggregate of all the information we were able to find out on the web. Now, the other thing that's important here, of course, is except for that one game I mentioned that I have played, uh, we played none of these games. So nothing we're talking about tonight will be games that are um, we have personal experience with. These are very well regarded guarded by a number of fans. It's not like we saw the game come up on one list and threw it on the list here. Uh, we tended, we tended, we trended? Tended isn't the right word. We chose games <laughs> that uh, multiple people were talking about. But again, we don't have any personal experience. So the following games are all pen and paper tabletop RPGs that use a standard deck of playing cards during play. Now, for most of these, the deck of cards is all you need to play, but there are a couple exceptions once we get into the list. And with that, let's get on to our list. All right, up first, I'm going to have to call out the one game system I know and have played that uses playing cards, and that is Savage Worlds. Uh, and technically, I realize Deadlands as well, because Savage Worlds is an evolution of Deadlands. Now, Savage Worlds is a generic role-playing system, uh, all about playing fast, furious fun. That's their, their three Fs, their tagline for Savage Worlds. This is a high-action, pulpy, adventure-style game where lots of things are going to happen quickly. And the thing with this game, where it's so-so on this list is it is a dice game. Uh, you have your stats and you try to roll under four on your dice and, or sorry, over four, over four on your dice to succeed at things. That's the main mechanic, but it does use playing cards, a standard deck during initiative and also during adventure downtime. So during initiative, it's pretty simple. Everyone just gets dealt out a card, but the neat part is if there's a joker, the deck gets shuffled. Plus usually something exciting happens if a joker is dealt out. Plus some of the rules also have it so that if you get like a face card, it does something extra. The other neat one is during downtime. So if between the adventure, your party sitting around the campfire, you flip a card and then someone at the party in the group has to tell a story. And the card that's flipped tells you what type of story you should tell. Now, in addition to that, that's just the original core rules. Savage Worlds being a universal system has numerous different settings out there. Like you can get Robotech, you can get Rifts, you can get uh, Rippers, which is like a Jack the Ripper, Victorian, Victoriana style game. There are all kinds of Savage Worlds games out there. And every one tends to have something special using the cards. Well, I admit I've glanced at uh, Savage Worlds for its ability to play supers mm. a few times, and I do like the idea of card-based initiative especially. Um, that's something that I, I think is just a great tool for the table. Mm -hmm. Now, what I have heard is that it's a system that's much harder on the DM than the players, uh, and managing the, the different ability levels and power levels of things during that game can be a real uh struggle but it does use cards and that is savage worlds next up i have the quiet year um this one 
has been categorized by people a couple times, different ways. Some people classify it as a board game. Some people classify it as a role playing game. Actually, it's one of the few things that has two entries on Board Game Geek. One on Board Game Geek and on RPG Geek. It's listed on both. Um, this is a game like Microscope. Microscope would be an RPG that I'm familiar with. That this reminds me of where the group, the players, are collaboratively building a world. Now, this is also called a map game because as you're building the world, you're drawing a map of your area. And what's happening here is there was a huge war and it just ended. There's a time of peace and you're about to have one year of peace, a quiet year. And you're going to explore the struggles of the post-apocalyptic community during that year. Now, what I like about this uh, at least from what I could read about it, is that unlike pretty much every post-apocalyptic game out there that's all about super mutants and shooting things and trying to survive and getting happy about a can of beans, this focuses on building something good during that quiet year. Now, this uses a full deck of cards, a 52-card deck, and what's cool is there's 52 cards and there's 52 weeks in the year. So you're going to use the cards as prompts for each week of the quiet year. Now, I have to say, the website for this game was a bit lacking in the kind of detail I wanted to make a real choice on, on whether or not I wanted to play this game or not, honestly. Mm -hmm. I'm still not 100% sure I understand this game after looking it over. Uh, now, the one thing that is interesting on the, on the site is they do have a breakdown of what every card in the deck means. Okay. Uh, so you can actually go through and see, you know, uh, an Ace of Spades means you... Uh, have to take a break and so you actually take the two top deck cards off your deck lose them and what you're doing this week happens for three weeks instead things oh, like wow. that ha happen it's 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 some there's some really interesting mechanics but the game states two to four players and i i'm not really sure why based on what i was able to read you couldn't play solo uh if uh, based on what i read so if any listeners have experience with this system i'd love to hear more about it uh and again that is the quiet year through the breach is a pen and paper rpg set in the world of malifo um malifo isn't a game we've talked about often on the show it's not one i played but it, this is a it started off as a miniature skirmish war game um one of the games that came out around the time Rackham came out with Confrontation that has some of the best looking, coolest miniatures I've ever seen. They kind of took the gaming industry by storm. Now, Malifaux as a brand has expanded out since the miniature game and has a couple different board games and now this RPG through the breach. Now, this is a really cool looking setting that like what's going to draw you to Malifaux is the aesthetic. It's a steampunk mythos magic mashup but very dark very like twisted magic demon summoning a really dark take on steampunk compared to what you usually see now in through the breach players are taking on the role of the fated which are men and women who have caught a great brief glimpse of their destinies now again like sean said online some of the websites on these games are great at selling the the setting not so great on selling the mechanics so i have to admit i have no idea how the cards actually work in this one but man does the setting look cool well this one really caught my eye as the fleeting nature nature of the professions actually in particular mm. and the and the intriguing and expansive setting uh i got a real steampunk meets warhammer fantasy mm -hmm. battle vibe from it and that is a good thing <laughs> yep. you know that's the sort of thing that will sell me on something uh and that was through the breach up next we have murderous ghosts now this is billed as a one shot for two or more players and right away that caught my attention because it's not often you find an rpg that plays good with only two players so right there it gets some bonus points i know it's the quiet year was another one that also did two players so we don't earn some bonus points in retrospect now the goal of murderous ghost this is a game for two or more players to play on halloween specifically is what it's designed for it's uh inspired by the tradition of sitting around telling ghost stories and the goal is to creep each other out there is no prep required for this. You just turn to page one of the book and start doing what it says. Uh, it's got a kind of choose your own adventure style format. Together, the players are telling the tale of an urban explorer deep inside a haunted, abandoned hotel. Now, there is an MC, a DM type role in this game where the MC is playing the ghost who is trying to kill the explorer. 
Now, the other players all act as a panel controlling the actions of the explorer. So in a panel system, it's multiple people are controlling one character, which is why this game was created, too. Uh, this one is from Vincent Baker himself, uh, half of the team behind the entire Apocalypse World engine stuff. Now, I am not a horror fan. Not a big deal. But if you want to get my intention, if you include this in your preview, <laughs> they actually had in the uh, one of the first pages of the book the uh, a, a win-lose so, which is odd for an RPG in, in the first place. You know, winning and yep. losing is something we, we generally kind of avoid in RPGs. But this yep. one had, you win if, you win if, you lose if your ghosts aren't murderous, if the <laughs> other players stop trying to escape, and instead help a ghost find peace and its eternal rest, you lose. <laughs> and that was Murderous Ghosts. All right, up next, I have Unbound. Uh, this is another universal role-playing system. I guess universal role-playing systems like to use universally accessible playing cards. Uh, what sets this one apart from other universal systems I've seen is that you sit down to play, or you're expected to sit down and play. I'm sure some groups sit down without this. But you're expected to sit down with your group for the first time with Unbound with no pre-existing idea of what you're going to be playing. The players create more than character sharing, character generation. You create the world, uh, the setting, and the adversaries all during like a session zero, all through using a series of leading questions. Now, the other thing that I saw that seems to, uh, that Unbound seems to stick out for, that they seem very proud of, I gotta say, because they, they talk about this a lot, is a highly detailed zone-based tactical combat-based system. They really push this. Now, this isn't a story game, as far as I can tell. This is not a rules light, single session, sit down and tell a story with a deck of cards. This is quite a crunchy RPG designed for running longer games and campaigns, not just quick one shots. Yeah, this one is interesting. And I 100% respect the incredible work that they've done on, their, on this system. Uh, in the end, though, it's just not for me. Uh, and the main reason of that is they've put so much into this card-based tactical system that you can play anything as long as it has combat. It is very specifically detailed as mm. a combat-oriented gaming system. And while there's nothing wrong with combat, the fact that you require combat to have this to play this game system puts me off a tiny little bit. But fair enough. That is unbound. Up next, we have the Western RPG, one I actually own, Aces and Eights from Kenzer Co. Uh, this is one of the few lists, games on the list that I have downstairs in my game room. And I watched the development of this game through Kenzer Co. back when I subscribed to Knights of the Dinner Table. This is a, a monthly comic book that also had RPG content in the back by all about a uh, group of gamers and the local gaming community. And at one point during the comic book run, they decided to run what they called a cattle punk game. And they played through this cattle punk game. And that story arc was so popular that everyone pushed Kenzer um, to publish the RPG that the characters and the thing made. And that's where Aces and Nates came from. And it was meant to be and still stands as one of the most dense detailed old west settings out there uh, and this is realistic old west like uh, realistic as you get with a role-playing game but not there's no fantasy elements this isn't deadwood there's no zombies this is you it is as far as according to the website the only website only western game that actually includes rules for things like cattle rustling and and all doing cowboy stuff that's not just shooting each other similar to savage worlds that i mentioned earlier the main system of this game is dice based. It's it's a, a, a traditional, you know, skill based roll dice, add your skills and stats. Where the cards come out is in a couple different systems. The big one though is their combat system, their gun shooting system, their their gunfight system, which actually uses a shot clock. Now, this actually uses a transparent template that you put over shadows of your enemy's pictures. And the book includes a whole bunch of different shadows for, you know, someone behind a cow, someone on a horse, someone running a stagecoach. And you put the shot clock over top and then you draw cards and you play a can of cards to show where your shot lands. A really unique system. Um, the other thing is they actually have a simulated poker system where you play shorter poker hands of poker to simulate a full poker game, again, using poker cards. So which again, poker being a huge part of the old west setting. 
I, this is the crunchiest game on the list. Unfortunately, my copy's literally still in shrink wrap downstairs. Like I, I thought this sounded awesome, but it's intimidating and thick. And I had a real hard time trying to sell my players on. You were gonna play cowboys. You're gonna be rustlers. Like, oh, are we gonna get to do this, this, and this? And like, no, no, you're gonna have to bring the wagon train home. And they're like, that doesn't sound like fun to me. And I'm <laughs> gonna say, I, I, I'm gonna have to lend them the comic books so they can read them, and then maybe they'll be like, oh, that does sound good. Yeah. Now, I am not, nor have I ever been a Western fan. Uh, even more so than horror, really. The genre just never worked for me. But if you are a Western fan, this game really seems like something you should check out. As yeah. it's one of the few, perhaps only, campaign games mm -hmm. for the Western theme. Uh, as long as you don't mind the fiddly shot clock mechanic. Uh, I, I watched a YouTube video. Yeah, and, it's... And, and I mean, it was an eight minute video on how to use the shot clock. Not, not that it needed to be that long, but it's a little over crunchy than compared to what it needs to be. But that was aces and eights. Now on the theme of Westerns, despite the fact that I just said, I'm not a fan, I came across an old gem that you can still get your hands on over on drive through RPG. And that is dust devils. This one caught my eye, not only because pen, paper and playing cards and poker chips are the only things you need to play, but because the mechanics of poker are also part of, of the okay. resolution system in the game, which is so deliciously thematic for a Western. Uh, and it even matches up your stats to the sweeps in your uh, in a deck of cards. And the GM is the dealer. Oh, I dig it. I remember hearing about this one. I, I This isn't one that I came across when I was doing my research. And I got to say, like, I recognize the name. Like, I remember Dust Devils. I don't know if it's a Kickstarter. Or I remember Buzz going around it. It does sound cool, and it does sound a heck of a lot simpler than trying to get through that thick kenzer co book yeah it was it was 2000 and, uh 2002 indie game of the year nice so. and that was dust devils talking about games on kickstarter here's one i actually did kickstart moto bushido uh this is back in 2013 i only backed at the pdf level um this the concept of this one is bike riding samurai and that alone right there i'm like Samurai on bikes, that just sounds cool. Now, this game is from NPC, uh, Nathan Philip Cole, who probably best known as one of the hosts of the Bikers, Dice, and Bars podcast, um, who was extremely active on Google Plus back in the day. And I honestly, I backed this because I got along with NPC really well. This was in order to support him. And he did a great job summing up this game to me, and this is what sold it right away, was Moto Bushido is a game about really sweet duels between really cool samurai who read, ride really awesome motorcycles. It's Sons of Anarchy starring Toshiro Mifun, underscored by Bushido Blade. I, right there, I was sold. The cover of this game looks amazing. All resolution in Moto Bushido was done using standard deck of cards, and it has a separate ruling subset that again uses a standard deck of cards. Yeah, I mean it's about a game about death and dying with swords and motorcycles where death is inevitable and not to be feared. Yeah. Um it's how can you go wrong? The basic resolution is just a high card yeah. wins between the dealer and the players, but then this dueling system that they've got involves hands of cards and even if only one player is dueling an NPC, the entire team, the entire table becomes involved in playing mm -hmm. it out uh and there are there you know there are um you can you can dirty your soul by the way you fight your your, yep. your games it's it's a really intriguing game uh and uh the fact that he uses cards is just a bonus and that is moto bushido yeah that even the dirty your soul thing i remember when that came out in um what was a uh, katana yeah that that card dueling game where if you draw blood you'd actually dirty your soul and, and dirty your um your commie yeah yeah it's a fantastic sounding game i've read this one i haven't played it. it that this is one i got the pdf i read through the pdf i'm like oh that sounds cool but another one that just my, my group likes you know traditional D, &D <laughs> dungeon crawling and yep. selling them on on, on and uh, swords and <laughs> on, on motorcycle sorry it didn't go over so well i have a different group now though maybe it'll, maybe it'll go over a little better now so we've mentioned a couple older games. If you want to really look back, I am going to throw out the oldest game on this list, something I have 
held in my hands in seen number of kinds, but never actually like picked up and read. And that is Castle Falkenstein uh, by Mike's Pondsmith and R. Kelsorian Games. Uh, that's the company most people know from Cyberpunk, especially nowadays, uh, who just released the Cyberpunk Red. Uh, this is a playing card driven RPG. This has been around since 1994, proving that using cards for conflict resolution is definitely not just a new story game thing. Although, Castle Funkenstein is quite a bit of a story game, especially for the time period it came out. Uh, this is a steampunk fantasy role-playing game. So you're looking at steam-powered, um, you know, tanks and, and a steam-powered sidearm kind of thing fighting against dragons and elves. It's, it's an interesting mashup. It is considered by many to be one of the first story games, right? Where the focus was on narrative and lighter mechanics versus crunch and combat and resource management. And honestly, I feel bad for all the years this game's been around. Like I've seen it at so many game stores. I've seen it in discount bins. I've seen people playing it at cons. This is one I've never actually played myself. And and we're definitely not talking about the GURPS version of well, Castle <laughs> Falkenstein. Yes, that's the same setting. It's the same, same, same everything else. But that one uses dice. Yep. All right, up next, I have a game I had to put on the list because of the what it's based on, the legends it's based on. And this is Monkey, the role-playing game. And Sean or Deanna found this one. As soon as they said it, I'm like, oh, is this based on the Monkey King? And sure enough, it is. Uh, this is based on the Chinese mythological character, the Monkey King, uh, who's got his staff and his crown, and he rides a cloud around um, from the classic myth, The Journey to the West. Players play out of grace immortals, so fallen gods, seeking redemption by escorting the monk Trupataka to India. I am a huge fan of the Monkey King character. I love the myth. I've seen various versions of Journeys of the West over the years. Uh, if you want to see one of the best Monkey Kings ever, um, Donnie Yen, who known as Ip Man or whatever, does a, a Monkey King movie where he's fantastic. Uh, this, the fact there's an RPG for this, this is one of those things I'm like, oh my God, there's a Monkey RPG. I, I want the game already. This uses two decks of cards, one for the GM and one for the player. So fits perfectly on this list. Yeah, I really enjoy how the character creation of your immortal is incorporated into the first, first play session rather than as a separate aspect at all. Um, and uh, it, again, you know, you, you can't go wrong with the mythology. And that was Monkey, the role-playing game. And just as a side note, worth watching is New Tales of Monkey on Netflix. If you want the Journeys of the West combined with Hercules slash Xena style TV, that's what that is. Because it's, it's about as corny and silly as Xena and Hercules, but it's the Monkey King story told almost in full. So... It, it, it's, it's campy and a little silly, but I really enjoy it. Up next, the final game on our list is going to be Primetime Adventures. This is when you turn on Netflix and you put on uh, New Legend of Monkey and you're like, man, this would be a great RPG. But you can't find Monkey the role-playing game. So you're like, oh, what would I use to play this? Well, Primetime Adventures is all about playing tvs dramatic tv series with with ensemble casts right this is all about character growth personal drama spanning any setting now interestingly it starts off like a writer room with a brainstorming session where the group together will decide what kind of show they want to play out one player will take on the role of producers other players play the protagonists in the show now to fit the um, background campaigns are broken into either five or nine session seasons meant to emulate your standard tv seasons resolution mechanics dead simple with players drawing cards based on the traits and looking for red cards so nice and simple you're just how many reds do you have you're trying to get more reds in your hand than your opposition i can't think of a lighter simpler use of playing cards yeah it's interestingly the first edition of the game you still use dice oh. uh, and it wasn't until the second edition that they switched it over to a card mechanic um again yes the 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 straightforward mechanic is just fantastic and what's interesting is the number of cards you draw to see how many successes mm -hmm. you get is based on your screen presence so each episode certain characters will take a leading role yep. and get a higher screen presence from one to three whereas other can characters who might have you know had a, a larger role in other episodes will step back some and and have less cards to use as a result and that was 
Primetime Adventures. All right, that's it for our list of RPGs that use standard playing cards. Now, while doing the research for this, Sean happened to find, I was a Reddit thread or a board game geek geek list or something. I can't remember which it was, but it was something neat. It was a list of solitaire playing card RPGs. Now, I gotta admit, I don't know if you want to consider solitaire RPGs role-playing games or uh, just solitaire or board games or whatever. That's up to you. You can decide on your own what you want to think of that. But I thought this was a really neat thing. And there was like a ton of games on this list from what I remember. It was huge. Uh, there were yeah. actually uh, 157 games wow. See? on the list. Now, while there were a number of them, these three really struck uh, struck out as interesting to me. And I have because I have to say, the dividing line between RPG, solo RPG, and just a different type of solitaire card game is very narrow. Right. So this, uh, the first one is Dungeon Crawl. Now this one is really teetering on that knife's edge of being a fancy solitaire game, uh, but it has character classes, player stats, and monster stats. All part of the game, so you've got a deck of uh, deck of cards, pen and paper. You can have a solo roguelike dungeon crawl, all of your own, with just this one game. So is this a a like? Is this something you can just free to play? Like you, yep, you just go online, play. find actually, the rules. It's actually instructables is where I is where the, oh, uh, the link brought me to. to. So, yeah, we'll make sure to throw a, a link to that in the show notes. And you know what? For the people in the chat, we've already got people like, oh, like, ooh, this looks interesting. Yep. We'll throw that in the chat room as well. So do you level up when you're going through? Or is it like the cards become a choose-your-own-adventure story? Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's uh, basically you're, you're, you're trying not to die. It's uh, Dungeon Roll is another one that was sort of gave me okay. a sort of similar feel um, yep. uh, uh, to this. So, And that was Dungeon Crawl. Uh, next up, we have Shooting Party. Now, this is a Jane Austen-esque romance thievery solitaire game. Okay. Uh, you're playing a young thief who has talked their way into a fancy hunting weekend and is trying to get one of the female guests alone in order to talk her out of her jewels. <laughs> that has got to be one of the most unique solitaire themes I've ever heard. Uh... <laughs> now, it, I think with a standard deck of playing cards, it's a little bit of a painted on th- pasted on theme. But All right. they do have some fantastic print and play uh, cards available that are much okay. more thematic on the in the Jane Austen sort of sense and actually quite beautiful as well. Again, rules free or is this something you'd have to purchase? Nope, you can uh, download Again. it on uh, for the, the files are available on Board Game Geek. Oh, very cool. <laughs> that was shooting the shooting party. And now the last one is, and again, this is freely available. Full, all the files are available on Board okay, Game cool. Geek. Uh, slasher. Now, this is not for kids or the faint of heart. You are trying to become a legendary horror icon and racking up a large body count while evading the police and moving through the neighborhood. Okay. And the way this one uses cards, it actually uses miniatures and dice and a, and a character sheet as well. Um, but it's uh, they use the deck as the layout of the neighborhood, where uh, black cards refer to houses with their lights off. Okay. Uh, red cards have lights on and there's different effects and you can you can actually even collect uh items and for your inventory throughout <laughs> sounds very interesting so this time you're playing the the, the hunter right like you, the you are playing you're, you're the slasher. killer yes. so this is the opposite of final girl i keep uh, where i am in podcast world right now which is still behind but i'm getting closer everyone's talking about final girl which is this game where you play the final girl who ends up defeating the monster at the end of the slasher film so this is this would be if you want if you if you want the opposite end <laughs> from something you can play on your own you can try slasher well that's it for our discussion on rpgs that use standard playing cards we're going to head over to the lobby now and see if in our chat room has anything to add. All right. I saw a couple go by. I think there's some playing card based RPGs that the lobby mentioned that we should check out there. Yeah, so Danielle, maybe- uh, thank you for joining us. It's been a while since we've seen you. It's good to see you out again. Has mentioned a couple there. So Robert Turk makes games that use standard card decks. Uh, he's got both Purgatory House and Starship Infernum with okay. blackjack systems for challenges. And the cards randomize the room's events you face. Sounds um, cool. And additionally, he's working on a new one that should be in beta soon, which is called uh, Goblonia. Goblonia. 
I thought he had decided that's something I should eat or run away from. Now, now, uh, Danielle mentions that she has actually played the uh, One Quiet, the quiet Night, Year. The Quiet Year, sorry. Um, and I'm just wondering what makes that a game that you, that you need two players for. Uh, if you, uh, it's been a while, she says, but again, it's 2020, so it's been a while for everyone to play everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and you, at least you've played it, whereas uh, I was just trying to suss out the system by uh, by reading a website, which was less than ideal. Um, other than Sweet. that, so all uh, of the games we were talking about tonight were games that use a standard deck of cards not necessarily only a standard deck of cards there are a few there that also require dice or whatever yeah but. and she's mentioning that uh yes the the in goblonia you actually play goblins okay that, that <laughs> there you go it actually reaction yeah. doesn't it there's some good games out there for playing goblins it, yeah. especially yeah. as long as they're silly goblins i like playing silly goblins murder is kind of creepy so, goblins so quiet here you're building that. a world so i guess you just need that interaction in order to, to yeah, like, uh, build things up, playing off each other, off each more other. interesting. Yeah, so I guess well, I you, suppose in theory you probably could, but you know it probably much, wouldn't be much of a game at that point. You might as well just sat down and write, write your own novel yeah, or build exactly. your own world. So uh, one of the ones that came to me after I had already done all the research and done all the show notes is I realized that Jim Pinto's games, which uh, Danielle played in the one I played in, uh, the protocol system uses playing cards. Though that uses them just as story prompts. So in that game, that game's all about improv acting, really. There's no resolution mechanic. You are given a scene, you are giving a, a place the scene happens, you're giving a setting for the scene. And you, I, as far as I remember, you might be given like a, a goal to do with the scene, like what you're trying to accomplish. And you just kind of go. And then the moderator just calls it or the group as a whole is kind of like, yeah, yeah, we're done talking about the thing. Let's move on to the next one. But that used playing cards to go. You'd flip the card to go. You are going to be discussing this and you are located here's your backdrop here's your setting and the one we played was uh I, i'm trying to remember the downfall of atlantis it was something atlantis i apologize i hadn't googled it um beforehand it was something about atlantis uh, oh man i can't remember the name of it but like i remember one of them was was, was about among the beasts and men was one of the whatever the card draws so would mean fall of atlantis thank you so Danielle was actually in the game I played. So there, that, that's a coincidental. That's why we summoned her tonight. Um, and I remember that that particular card or, or whatever suit came up many times. And it, whenever we had Among the Beasts and Men, we were always like in crowded streets or we were out in the farms. It was always a busy area where we were having our thing. Uh, and it, it was very like, much a... looks like it was actually Desperation of Atlantis. I, desperation I just the of Queen Atlantis? Conquest, the Queen City Conquest there you uh, go. schedule. And it's Desperation, desperation of, of Atlantis. Atlantis. And what it is, you're basically playing the fall of Atlantis and determining what causes it to sink under the seas. Uh, in our game, they were at war with Athens, I think it was. That shows how long ago it was. But that's <laughs> another game that uses uh, used cards. Um, but again, for mainly, a, 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 a definitely a role-playing experience. We definitely had characters. I don't think we used the cards to generate our characters. If I remember, we were just kind of picked and filled out some prompts. But they definitely used a standard deck of cards for uh, when, when was the one running it uh, moderating would use the cards to to set each scene and yes it was athens you were uh... athens yeah yep. that's i thought so it was actually a really good game that was a fantastic game actually yeah her character was athenian <laughs> right, i I, right. I was i was the representative of the merfolk which there was nothing in the game that said there were merfolk but i decided to be the representative of the merfolk so from that point mm -hmm. on uh, there were Murphy. Ryan Ryan jumped in thinking that the uh, the the solitaire RPG uh, concept was niche. Uh, just before we mentioned <laughs> that, I found 157 different games. Again, well, the, the concept of RPG as a solo game at all is is a little questionable. I know there are people who have do solo RPGs and and and, but I, I find the whole idea a little on the questionable side. But since we're doing playing cards and solitaire yeah. is such a, a theme for playing cards in general, I thought uh, we could, uh, you know, ride that knife's Fair. edge and, and find a few. And I think Slasher really, really of, of all of them was the most uh, sol solitaire um, RPG of them all. Yeah, I think in general, most people in that case are using the video game RPG concepts of I have a character, I level up, I collect loot, I collect yep. gear, all those aspects of an RPG, not actually playing a role. Yeah. Uh, and, I think, and going through the list, I mean, again, there were 157. I think the first several I went through were 
not RPG at all. I mean, they were they yeah. were so new. They were new versions of Solitaire, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I mean, someone might have painted a theme loosely yeah. over top, but it was just another Solitaire game. It's it's like saying uh, King's Corners an RPG because you're playing a jailer trying to put the kings in the <laughs> four jail cells in the corners or something, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, it's yeah, that yeah. kind of stretch. All right. Uh, all right are we good we got anything we're... else from the chat room i didn't notice anything else we're, we're a little later than usual chat room but it's still it's great to see the people who are there i uh, after taking three weeks off i'm glad anyone <laughs> remembers we're still around <laughs> Absolutely. so good to see so folks back well the merch is good in the states uh but we still have uh covid here in canada that is locking down our uh, suppliers in ottawa but i've got mine Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we we'll we'll start we'll start selling people the the yeah, uh, the, we'll the files to yeah, go we'll, we'll, their own. Yeah, that's the there's the other. <laughs> um, uh, All right, I think we're good. 